so. You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. Now, before we get rolling, I do want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for only $10 a month, ladies and gents. You can get full access to my members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost effective manner possible, as well as you can come sailing with me on one of my numerous deliveries throughout the year. I've got one coming up in January from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Over to uh, Jacksonville, Florida. I got one coming up in February from the BVIs to North Carolina. Lots and lots of sailing happening. And you can come along. Just sign up to Patreon. Get over to the members area. Let's get to know each other. And let's get you on a boat sailing with me. Pretty simple, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, today we're discussing routing. Look at this. I got a big fancy picture of the world right here. Why am I going to discuss routing? Well, it's the most important thing when it comes to your sailboat. Do it wrong and you die. It's very, very simple. Understand? The importance of this is number one. And it falls right in with being safe on your sailboat. So... Let's bang this out today, and I'm going to show you some easy, simple tools that you can use even right from home to understand how to begin routing trips. Now, where do people usually like to sail? Usually the Bahamas, the Caribbean. Those are two meccas in the world of sailing throughout the world. Now, there's tons of other places you can sail and a lot of other places that people do sail. But generally speaking, everybody's trying to get down here to the Caribbean and they pull up their chart plotter. Maybe they got a brand new, fancy, dancy, new used sailboat to them and they're rip roaring, ready to go. They think wind and it's free and they're like, yeehaw. So this app that I'm using right here, this is called Google Earth. Now, if I go right down here on the bottom and I can click layers so I can add all kinds of different things. I can make it clean. Now I got no borders. I can do borders, places, roads. I can do everything on it. I can do 3D buildings. Uh, 3D coverage. I can even do grid lines. Now, grid lines are fantastic, especially if you're going to be sailing because you can get your longitude and latitude numbers right here and you can plug those directly into your chart. I can also turn on animated clouds, but hey, that's just going to block my view. So we're not going to do that. So right here, the lower left hand side, you're going to see all of these layers. So I want it pretty basic for the purpose of this video to make things easy for you. Now, right down here at the other bottom, I got a little person. I can click this little person and I can scroll in to anywhere that I want it to go. We'll go right here. And as I'm cruising around, I can take this little person, click him, and I can drop down. Anywhere that says blue or a blue circle, I can drop down. Here's the cruise ship dock in NASA. Okay. So now I can see that with my little blue person back right out. Okay. So now I can basically go anywhere in the world be a Google Earth, and I can start looking for places that I might want to stop. And why is this important for routing? Because we're looking for dinghy docks. We're looking for marinas. We're looking for safe places. Now, this is right in Nassau, right next to the resort. If you ever book a slip right here at this marina, you get full use of this resort. They've got a rock wall, big swimming pool, a lazy river. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. So, this is a fantastic tool for anybody to use in the world of sailing to start routing your trips. I've seen incredibly experienced captains have no idea how to route a trip. They just hear from a friend who heard from a friend that they should go here and that's where you wind up going and you find out it sucks. So using Google Earth is a way for you to determine where to go and the things that you'd like to do. Now, even on an Atlantic crossing, fairly easy. I can go right over here. I click, there's a little tape measure up here at the top. I can adjust it to nautical miles. And I can say that I want to go from Miami to Nassau and then up to Bermuda. Okay. Now I've got myself, that's on meters for some reason. Let's change that to nautical miles. So now I got myself 907 nautical miles as far as a crow flies. Crows fly in a straight line. Not really, but it's just a analogy. Now, boats don't go in a straight line, so generally you can add a few hundred miles to the distance it will tell you on here. So you start there. 
Now, if you want to figure out how long a trip is going to take you, it's pretty simple. Most boats in the 40 foot range and up can do about 150 nautical miles per day. So if I'm in Miami and I click my little tape measure and I want to go from Miami to Nassau, I have 135 nautical miles in a direct line. There's also the Gulf Stream right there. Got to kind of slow me down a little bit, but I now know I can do that trip in a day. No problem, because again, most sailboats will generally cover about 150 nautical miles a day. Now, when I'm a delivery captain and I'm going, my goal is 200 nautical miles a day. But an easy way to figure out how long your trips are going to be, pull up Google Earth, do a little map of Ruski, and measure it out. Divide it by 150. Assume you can do 150 a day, because you can. And then that's going to tell you how many days it's going to take you to get to where you need to go. So let's work out one of, in my opinion, the greatest routes of all time for somebody who has no desire to cross an ocean. Now I've crossed the ocean multiple times here. I'm not a big fan of it. It gets awfully boring out there. Um, maybe something for somebody to do once in their life. So let's say you're gonna start in, uh, we'll say Miami, okay? Let's say that you're right here. You're in the inter coastal waterway unfortunately for you because the icw sucks so you can come out right here got to get underneath this dumb bridge lots of bridges you got to get under things like that so we're just going to plant you let's say that we're down here by uh we'll just say key biscayne okay this is going to be our starting point so i'm going to grab my little ruler and i'm just going to plant it right here let's say this is where i'm at i'm anchored out Live my best life. I've got my boat provisioned. She's all ready to go. And now I need to figure out what in the world I'm doing because I'm brand new to sailing. So I'm checking on my chart plotter, okay? Because I'm checking depths. I can see right here on Google Earth, it's got to be a little bit shallow. So I got to figure out where I can get through. So keep in mind, use Google Earth along with your chart plotter. Now, here we go. I'm cruising. Let's say I'm going to book right through here. And I got a reef right here. Nobody wants to hit a reef, right? And I'm going to head up. I'm going to make sure I'm not going to hit this dang reef. And I'm going to get up here by this channel. Because this is where everybody's going to go out into the open ocean. And so now, if I combine this with another free app called Windy, ladies and gents. On Windy, I can click over here. I can use more layers. If I go on down, I can grab the currents. Okay? Right here, off Miami. <sighs> Remember, we're leaving Key Biscayne right here. I'm going to smack this Gulf Stream. Right now, it's about two and a half knots in the middle of the Gulf Stream. That's going to push me north. Now, I can go into it so it doesn't push me, but I'm going to use more fuel. It's going to depend on the weather, things like that. So Google Earth, I know I'm going to smack right the Gulf Stream. Okay. Now, where do I want to go, though? Right. I'm not going to try to cut directly across because of the Gulf Stream, and there's nothing here. So I'm going to grab the Gulf Stream right about here. We're going to kind of go... Nice and northerly because of the Gulf Stream. Now, I can technically check in right up here. But again, why am I going there? What's here? Nothing. There's nothing here. There's nothing at all here. There's one little resort. Not a lot happening. Hey, they got a Wendy's. Fantastic. But I'm trying to get myself south down to the Caribbean, and I want to do it via the Thorny Patch. That's what this route is called. So for me personally, I'm going to book it, and I'm going straight to Nassau. Okay, I've been to Nassau. It's probably my favorite place in the Bahamas. That's just me, personal preference. So I'm going to shoot right to Nassau. The main channel's right here. How do I know that's the main channel? Well, I've been there a bazillion times, but I can also look and I can see all these cruise ships right here on Google Earth. So I know this is the main channel. I know it's deep because the cruise ships are coming through and I can kind of scroll around. I can see a bunch of people anchored here. So I'm going to assume I'm able to anchor there too. Um, might need to pick myself up an anchoring permit while I'm there. But so now I'm shooting over and I've called ahead of time, right? I know what I'm doing here. So I've called ahead of time. I've reserved myself a slip for at least a day or two until I figure out the lay of the land and where I might want to anchor or grab a ball to save some money. Maybe this is just a quick stopover, regroup. And in that case, maybe I'll just anchor right here. Since I've personally been here, I'm just going to grab one of these bad boy slips, okay? I'm going to get full use of this fancy resort here. I can go swimming, do all that stuff. I can check out NASA. I can go for a walk. I can go over to the Atlantis Casino, which is over here, if that's what you want to do. 
Um, and so now I'm there. That's 200 nautical miles. You can do that in a day and a half, no problem. It's not any big wild adventure. And the entire time, I'm close to a lot of things. Okay? This is not very far from this little turn. So the whole time, if something happens, I got places I can stop. Very, very important when you're routing your trips to make sure you know what is everywhere and where it's all going. So you'd want to find out any marinas here, any hardware stores, and you can do that all right here on Google Earth. You can just go right here and you can just search marine store. Okay. I'm not going to do it right now because it'll mess up my little uh, mileage thing I've got going here. So now I know I'm going to Nassau. I can grab my little guy again. I can plop down. I can get a street view. I can see exactly where everything's at. Where's the grocery store at? What's around that I may or may not want to see? And how long do I actually want to be there? Okay. So now I've got NASA figured out just from Google Earth right here. I'm also going to match it to my chart plotter to check depths. Now, I'm going to keep on going here. I'm going to go right through this channel. I'm going to keep going. These bridges are giant. You can fit right under them. You don't have to worry. Okay. Now, as you get out here, here comes the wide open, the deep blue right there in NASA. Now from here, it just depends on what you want to do. Okay. So we're cruising, we're bruising. Now I can hit all these different places, but again, why? What am I looking for? Oh my gosh, there's a nice white sandy beach there. Guess what, ladies and gents? There's nice white sandy beaches all over the darn place in the Caribbean and in the Bahamas. So there's no need to stop at all of them. Figure out which ones you want to stop at and why. Why are you going there? So we're going to keep on cruising. Don't need to just hit random beaches okay keep on going i'm doing the thorny patch i'm only 300 nautical miles into this trip it's going to be like 500 because sailboats again don't move in a straight line now if i'm all done here why did that just stop on me uh i didn't say to stop you little bugger all right so if i'm all done here my little thing stopped come on man okay I have to get rid of that. Start over again. Miami, up, over, down, around, NASA. Boom, through the little canal. I'm making my way down. Bingo, here I am. Now from here, I've got a choice to make. What's the quickest way for me to get down to the Caribbean? It's to go offshore right here and then sh shoot down. But let's say you don't want to do that. You're not a big fan of being offshore. You like island hopping, coastal cruising. I get it. I do too. So what's my next stop going to be? I'll probably go to Turks and Caicos. Why? A lot of people go to Turks and Caicos. There's nothing here either. And by nothing, I mean nothing. But if you're going to go to like the little deserted white sandy beach, they're very, very pretty here. So you can stop in Turks and Caicos. Here's the main part of the town. There's not much happening in the Bahamas. And it's wildly, wildly overpriced. Okay. So now I'm going to keep on moving. I'm grooving. I'm shaking. I am baking. Now from here, I can go to the Dominican Republic. Okay. Wow. I'm in another country. Once again, I'm cruising. I'm hanging out all over the Dominican Republic. I am super, super excited. Right now, I've got about 880 nautical miles into my amazing adventure so far. Now, for some sailors on YouTube, they haven't even sailed that many miles and they're experts. So if you wanted to, you could say you were an expert as well. Now, right here, we have our first problem. Okay. We have the Mona Passage, Isla de Mona. Zamona Passage. Now, the Mona Passage here, if we look over on Wendy, it gets to be a bit of a doozy. Now, it depends on when and what the weather's doing, but a lot of things converge here and it can get nasty. It can also be super, super mellow. So, what you do, you're over here, you wait for your weather window, right? So, you wait till it's nice and calm. Then you cross on over and bam, now you're in Anguilla, Puerto Rico. There's nothing here, but hey, they got white sand beaches and all that nonsense that everybody wants to see. You can anchor right out here for free. You can run on the street to the Sam's Club, something like that. Uh, or you can kind of just keep going up around the northern tip of Puerto Rico. You're fairly close to shore here. You're within like 10 miles to shore. So if something happens, you can pull right in. Now, the north coast of Puerto Rico doesn't have a lot of places you can anchor. There's a lot of reef and stuff. Um, but in emergency situations, you can pull right in. So here we go. We're cruising. We're shaking. Whoa, whoa we're baking. We keep on going. What's our next big stop going to be? We're going to keep on going here and we're cruising. We're about a thousand miles into our trip by now. Here's our next stop. San Juan, Puerto Rico. So this is the main San Juan Harbor Marina right here. You can anchor right here for free. You can take your dinghy. Dinghy dock goes up right by Sizzlers right here. 
Sizzler's is right here. Dingy Dock, right here in front of it. From there, you can grab an Uber in Puerto Rico, and you can hit Costco. You can hit Sam's Club. You can hit Walmart. You can pick up all the extra things you need for your boat. By this time, you know, we're 12, 1,300 nautical miles into our trip. Something's going to have broken by then. So you can pick up some spare parts, things like that, right there in Puerto Rico. You can anchor there for free as long as you want to, basically, until you get everything. You can also order things from Amazon, be here in a week or so. So you can do that, and you can keep on going. Now, if you want to, you can hang out in Puerto Rico, grab yourself an Uber. It's a U.S. territory. And you can check out all the old, uh, you know, fancy stuff, old San Juan, things like that. And now you can just kind of keep on cruising down. Now we're hopping along the north side of Puerto Rico. Again, there's not much here. This is not stuff you can really pop in and hang out on a sailboat. Lots of reefs, lots of waves, not much is protected. So we're going to keep on going. Now here we go. We're going to hit this part. Blam. Now we're at the east end of Puerto Rico. We're going to cut into this channel here. This is Fajardo, Puerto Rico. This technically has the largest marina in the entire Caribbean. It's very, very expensive, but here she is. The largest marina in the entire Caribbean, ladies and gents. So on my little route, I can decide to stop there. If I want to stop there, then I grab my little person down here and I plop in and I do a street view, right? But for right now, I'm just going to kind of cover a basic route. Now off the coast of Puerto Rico, we've got Vieques. This is a Spanish Virgin Island. We also have Calubra. This is also another Spanish Virgin Island. So now, all the way so far, I've already been to Miami. I've hit the Bahamas. I've hit Nassau, I've hit Turks and Caicos, I've hit the Dominican Republic, I've also hit Puerto Rico, now I've hit the Spanish Virgin Islands. I mean, I'm covering ground here, and I'm only at about 1,100 nautical miles as a crow flies. Now here's where it gets super, super fun. I can bang out and jam out to the U.S. Virgin Islands, which is right here, Charlotte, Amali. That's the capital, right? So same thing, I'm using this Google Earth, I'm looking around, I'm seeing where's everybody at. Where's all the boats at? Okay, that's where I need to go. Because as a novice sailor, you don't know where to go. So you're looking for other boaters to try to figure out where they're going to go. Again, you're going to grab a marina for that first day. In the USVI, it's free to anchor. So you can just anchor out, take your dinghy to shore, walk around, get to know people. But there's two places here to refuel. One of them's right here, Crown Bay Marina. And the other one's right over here. Okay? You cannot go through this passage right here. It's too shallow and you will ground. So now we're in the U.S. Virgin Islands. We're kicking back. We're hanging out. We're living our best life. You always got to watch out for these ferries. They move fast. Don't get hit by one. Um, so that's a good stop on a trip there. Now we're cruising around the U.S. Virgin Islands. We can pop up right here. Blamo, Cabamo. Now I'm in Red Hook in the U.S. Virgin Islands. There's a fantastic beach right here called Sapphire Beach. It's amazing. It's white. It's crystal clear. It's phenomenal. So now I've hung out at Ren Hooks for a bit. There's some bars here. There's Bernie's Bar, things like that. I've hung out there, and now I'm like, geez, where do I want to go? I love the USVIs so far. Blam. I take another 10-mile crossing. Now I'm in Cruise Bay. What am I looking for again? I'm looking for boats. Where's everybody going? Bunch of people are going right here. So I know I can anchor out there, most likely. Bunch of people are going right here. Blam, I can anchor out right there. Bunch of people are right here. Boom. So if I want to get away and be a little more secluded, I can go here. If I want to be right smack in the busy things, then I just go right in here. Blam. And I'm moving. I'm shaking. I'm baking. I'm cruising. Now on Google Earth, I'm kind of getting a rough idea of my mileage, right? But again, boats don't move in a straight line. So we're kind of going. I can check out as much of the islands as I want to. At this point, you have a decision to make. Do you want to go to St. John? Down here. Do you want to go to this island? Maybe, maybe you don't, maybe you do, who knows, but that's another one that you can do. Or do you want to pop right to the British Virgin Islands? It's like nine miles away. Very, very expensive to cruise in the British Virgin Islands. Keep that in mind. That's why we're doing this route. So if it was me, I'm skipping the British Virgin Islands because it's expensive. I'm heading down here. This is going to be a longer passage. Okay. It's not terrible. You can do it in a day. No big deal. So I'm going there. Now, from there, I'm going wherever I want to go. I can hit Anguilla. No problemo. Phyllisburg. Gustavia. I can hit all of these. All these islands. They're all different countries. Montserrat. St. John's. 
I can go everywhere here. I hit Guadalupe. Now, what you can do, depending on the time of year, you can hit the windward side of the islands. That's the side of the island that the wind comes from, right? You can explore the windward side of all these islands. You can get down here. You can hit Dominica. You can hit Martinique. Keep on going. You got St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Blam! On your way down. You got Granada. And then from here, I can shoot over to Trinidad and Tobago. Fantastic. You can see some howler monkeys. And they can chase you all over the island. Now from there, by now, I've done a ton of sailing. Okay, And most of it has been small trips. So by now... Once you're in this journey, you're about 2,500 nautical miles by now. Even though it says 1,750, it's going to be about 2,500 because, again, boats don't move in a straight line. What you can do from here is you can immediately go back and you can hit the leeward side of these islands. So you can just go right back up the other side of these islands, the opposite side of Puerto Rico, the opposite side of the Dominican Republic, Haiti. Then you can go up, hit the Bahamas again, you can go back and you'll have covered about 5,000 nautical miles. Um, that's a fantastic trip to do, especially for novice sailors because everything is so close. But if you want to keep going and you've really gotten the sailing bug by now as a brand new sailor, what you can do is you bang out over here. You hit the A, B, C islands right here. So you got Aruba, Curacao, all of those things. Bonaire's here. So you can hit these three islands. You can spend weeks on each of these islands. They're absolutely gorgeous and amazing. And guess what? We're right off the coast of Venezuela. So if I wanted to, I could plop right in and I can go check out Venezuela. I could keep on going from Aruba. Now I'm in Colombia. I'd avoid Medellin. It's a pretty dangerous place. But I'm all the way down here off the coast of Colombia. I'd take it easy. I'd try to be a bit careful, um, you know. And then I would just keep on cruising, okay? Now, here's the Panama Canal. We're not going through the Panama Canal because it's too expensive. We're trying to live on the cheap here and do this. But what am I going to do? I'm going to check out Panama while I'm there. we got San Jose. I've got Nicaragua. I can keep on going. I'm cruising. I'm going around the corner. I can hit Belize. You ever heard of Belize? It's that big fancy place everybody says they're amazing for going to. Hit Belize. Uh, you can party your life away there if you want to. You can keep on going all the way up. Now, you got to avoid Cuban waters. You can't go to Cuba just randomly. You need cer certain permits to be able to do that and stuff. So, now from there, I'm going to take off. If I wanted to, I've got several options here. I can keep on going. I can go up. I can go around. Boom. And I can hit the Yucatan Peninsula. I can keep going. Blammo. Now I'm in Mexico, right? I'm in the Gulf of Mexico. I check out Mexico. I can keep on going. And then now I'm up cruising the coast of the United States. We got Houston, Louisiana, New Orleans, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm doing the west side of Florida on down. And now I can hit the Florida Keys, one of the greatest places in the world to sail. I can go down here to Key West. I can check it out. I can love it. It can be amazing. Now from here, I can switch things up, right? I can continue going, keep on going. Instead of taking the path I took before, I'm going to go off the coast of Cuba. I'm not going to hit Cuban waters because it's illegal. I'm going to check out Haiti. Boom. I'm going to cut right through Haiti. I'm going to keep on going down. Blammo. Now I'm in Jamaica, right? I'm going to go all the way around Jamaica. Blam. Okay. Then I'm going to check out the south side of the Dominican Republic this time. This time I'm checking out the south side of Puerto Rico, not the north side. Checking out the south side of the U.S. Virgin Islands. And this time, I'm hitting the leeward side of all these islands. So I'm not seeing the same thing twice here, ladies and gents. These are totally different. Some of them are different countries. One side's French. One side's Dutch. So I'm going to keep on going down along. Now, for some reason, my stupid thing just did it again. But So I'm going to keep on going here. We're just going to keep going. We're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. Uh, and we're moving. Now I'm back in Granada, right? And look at all that you would have sailed. That is absolutely phenomenal. You will have visited dozens and dozens of different countries. You will have sailed, by the time it's all said and done, close to 20,000 nautical miles without ever technically crossing an ocean. Now, I mentioned this the other day in my videos. There's no need to cross oceans. 
that's just for people's ego usually. Um, you, of course, can, but an, an Atlantic crossing is about a third of this mileage here. An Atlantic crossing's 3,000 miles ish, give or take, uh, depending on what you're doing there. But a trip like this, it'll be all in warm climates, all enjoyable, more white sand beaches than you could ever possibly imagine, numerous, numerous di different countries. And you know this number is going to be about double because sailboats don't sail in a straight line. So to route your trips, ladies and gents, in my opinion, always, always start out on Google Earth, basically. Now, I'm going to pull up a route plan that I've actually done a delivery on to kind of show you exactly how I do it and what I use and what makes sense. So here's a route that I did for another client just at the beginning of this year. And I will make these books for every trip that I go on when I'm the delivery captain. I'll hand them out to everyone on board so that at any given time throughout that trip, everybody can open up their guide and they can know exactly where we're at, where we're going, where we're going to be, what's close. That allows them to keep in touch with family, friends, and let everybody know exactly what they're doing. So. I had four people on this one, the two owners, a patron, and myself. Now, the trip was from San Juan, Puerto Rico to North Carolina. You should remember this type of an image. I took it directly from Google Earth. Now, it's all in a straight line, but we're not going in a straight line, obviously. Now, I route my trips specifically day to day. So February 16th, 2023, we depart the San Juan Bay Marina. I've got the marina address as well as the phone number. Now, our arrival is Turks and Caicos. I've got the marina there as well as the address and the phone number in case of emergencies. So we're departing San Juan Bay Marina, 6 a.m. February 16th. We're going to head northwest to the leeward side of Turks and Caicos. It's 382 nautical miles. This section of the trip should take no more than four days with a high probability of arriving just off Turks early. We should arrive late evening, February 18th or early morning, February 19th. The goal is covering a minimum of 100 nautical miles. Now for that trip, there was a big storm in the middle of that. So that's why it says 100 miles. We were heading into a storm, but ideally doing 150 nautical miles. Days three, four, and five, we will be on passage. Now, February 19th, we're departing this same arena that I had before. And our next arrival is in the Exumas in Georgetown. Now, these two places were not stops, but the addresses, phone numbers, and locations were on there in case of emergency. On the morning of February 19th, we will be passing just to the leeward side of Turks and Caicos. There, again, is no stop planned here unless there's an emergency. From here, we will head 40 nautical miles north. We will then make a starboard turn, continuing 40 nautical miles east, cutting through the island chain. From here, we'll make a port turn, then heading north 180 nautical miles and passing just to the windward side of Georgetown, Bahamas. We will cover 260 nautical miles on this leg of the journey and should take us just over two days, arriving on February 21st. And I have a picture of exactly what we're doing. We hang a right and then we hang a left. Boom. February 21st, again, I've got the close marinas, the ones we're leaving from and the ones we're going to go by. On the afternoon of February 21st, we'll be passing just to the windward side of Georgetown, Bahamas. There is no stop planned here unless there's an emergency. From here, we will head 140 nautical miles north, northwest, arriving to the windward side of Nassau, Bahamas. We will then make a port turn heading southwest 50 nautical miles, arriving in Nassau, Bahamas. On this leg of the passage, we will cover 190 nautical miles. This section of the trip should only take two days. We will arrive on February 21st, the latest being February 24th. We have a two-day stop here to relax and refresh. So there's my basic route. I go out, I hang a left. Now, I even printed out a map of where we're going to be so everybody knows exactly where everything's at on the island once we get there. And it continues on. The 26th, again, I've got addresses for the marinas that we're going to be by or stopping at or close to. On the afternoon of February 26th, we will leave NASA heading 40 nautical miles. We'll make a port turn heading 110 nautical miles northwest to catch the Gulf Stream. This will only take one day with the goal being to use the Gulf Stream for more speed. We will head north using the Gulf Stream 300 nautical miles. This will take roughly three days. We will then head northwest 70 nautical miles, arriving offshore of Savannah, Georgia. We will arrive on March 2nd. No stops are planned here unless there is an emergency. So that was that leg of that trip. Now, March 2nd, we depart again. 
Here's all my addresses for the marinas that are close in case there's an emergency. On the afternoon of March 2nd, we will be under passage just passing Savannah, Georgia. From here, we head north 160 nautical miles over two days, reaching our final destination of Myrtle Beach Yacht Club. There we go. So my trip is laid out day by day, specifically what times, how many models, what direction, how many miles we're covering and everything. Now, at the end of these trips, I also give everybody a test. Now, it's a fairly basic test, but I have a lot of questions on a lot of pages. It's about a seven page test for everybody that comes on board with me so that everybody learns something while they are on the trip. So at the end of any delivery with me, you are then able to go out and sail all by your lonesome self and you know everything that you need to do. As long as you complete this test, pay attention on the trip, pay attention to your book, everything that you need to know, I will teach you all the safety procedures, blah, 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 teach you nodding, teach you planning and everything like that. So that, my friends, is exactly why something like Google Earth is so valuable if you want to be a good captain. Once you're a really good captain, you can do these trips and you can plan them out just like this for everybody involved. And then that way, everybody on your boat knows exactly what to expect every single day. Now, one of the worst things you can ever do on a sailboat is to just go willy nilly in this stuff. Now, if you're cruising around, you've got a crew of people, friends and family, we're going to go to the Bahamas. Fantastic. But where and why are you going to the Bahamas? And what is it that everybody on board wants to see in the Bahamas? People on sailboats, generally speaking, they don't like to wake up and just have no idea of what's coming as far as where they're going to go. Maybe George loves Diet Coke and he's about to run out of Diet Coke. George wants to know how long until we're somewhere like Nassau that I can get off the boat and I can go hit a market and resupply my Diet Coke habit. You can't just leave these people up in the air wondering what in the world and where in the world you're going. It's not fun for people. And in order to be a good captain, you need to be teaching people how to do this stuff. And you need to be able to show them, hey, George can get his Coca-Cola right here. And you should be able to look at your route plan and say, hey, George, page 15, man. We're on page 14. We got 45 nautical miles to cover. Then we're going to hit Nassau, George. We can go make a store run. Um, and as you're planning these out, Google Earth is such a great tool because you can check out the towns. Now, if I'm in the Bahamas and let's say I want to go somewhere absolutely useless, like the Berry Islands right here, um, why am I going to go here for a white sand beach? There's absolutely nothing here. So if your supplies are running low, uh, this is somewhere you're going to skip because you need to get somewhere where you can resupply. If you goofed up on your initial supply, you got to get somewhere better. So a lot of these islands have absolutely nothing. And people are like, I'm cruising around the Bahamas. Yeah, but where and why and what for? Just to see white sand beaches. You want to see white sand beaches? Fantastic. Take the boat somewhere with white sand beaches where there's other things around so that your crew can get off the boat and go and do things. Here's a fantastic, fantastic beach right here. Now, this is right off the coast of the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's crystal clear. It's pretty deserted. There's nothing around but boaters. Why are boaters there? Because it's fantastic. And what can you do? You can take your dinghy when you're grabbing a ball right here. You can go right around the corner and kablammo. Now I'm in Cruise Bay. Guess what? We're going to see another white sand beach. Here's the dinghy dock right in Cruise Bay. So, Another sandy beach, lots of restaurants, lots of shopping, lots of things to do. And if you're brand new and you don't know any of this stuff, using Google Earth as a tool is the best thing you can do. You can do it directly from home. Let's say that you want to go, let's find an island here. We'll just pick a random island. Uh, let's say I'm going to Montserrat. Okay. I'm looking at Montserrat. I'm like, wow, not much happening here. Okay. Nothing's going on there. I'm not seeing any boats anywhere. All right, here's a little town area. Uh, I'm not really seeing any boats. So if I've never been here, where am I going to anchor? Am I going to be able to anchor? Where am I going to be able to stop? Because it looks like there's nothing here. So then I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe I'm not going to go there because there doesn't seem to be a lot there. 
Uh, maybe I'll just go right across the way to St. John's. St. John's, I got a lot of places to pull in. There's a lot of boats around here. A lot of people hanging out. We got a cruise ship right there. We got some more boats uh, and a lot more happening here. So maybe this is going to be a better stop than Montserrat. You know, maybe you just have to take a day trip to Montserrat, but you don't stay there for the night. And you go here because it's got more things that you may or may not need. Same thing with Dominica. Dominica's pretty empty, ladies and gents. Don't know if you've ever been there, but I have. There's not a lot happening. And it, of course, depends on what type of sailing that you actually like to do. Now, if you're one of those people that want to be off the beaten path, you don't want to be close to people for some reason, then you can go to a little bit more of these deserted islands. But you need to make sure that your provisions are correct and that the other people on your vessel also enjoy that type of sailing. If you take me on a sailboat and you're like, yeehaw, we're going to go Tom Hanks it and cast away and we're not going to be near anything resembling anything for the next month. Uh, guess who's not going? I'm not going because I don't like that kind of sailing. I like to stop. I like to mingle. I like to hang out with other people. I like to try the food. All those good things. I, um, I never, ever like just being in the middle of nowhere. Um, I always like to go to populated areas. And that's just me. Everybody has their preference as to what they want to do. But this is the greatest tool to use for routing a trip, ladies and gents. That trip that I just routed... You could spend 30 years doing that trip, never see everything twice. Um, and instead of hanging a left here, you can go down to French Guiana. I mean, you could go all the way down around South America if that's what you wanted to do and never cross an ocean. It's going to get a bit cold down here, but you could technically do that. Now, the same is true if you want to do an Atlantic crossing. So you start here from Virginia, you hit Bermuda, boom, and then you cross over, you hit the Azores. And then you make your way on up and over. It's only about 3,500 nautical miles. It's not even that far. Then you go up through the Straits. Boom. Now you're in Italy, France, Rome, all those things. Um, and you're cruising over there. It's very, very expensive to sail over there. But uh, the trip that I just routed for you, in my opinion, is one of the greatest sailing adventures of a lifetime. There is so much to see and do there. It is absolutely, unequivocally phenomenal. And by the time you're done with that, or by the time you even get down here to the bottom, you're really going to understand what type of sailing you actually like. And maybe you decide that you like the long passages. Then you take off from there. You go to Bermuda, Bermuda, you cross over. Blammo. Now we're across the ocean. Easy enough, right? But a trip like this is fantastic for novice sailors or new sailors to understand. And you're going to learn a wide variety of sailing and a wide variety of weather and wind with waves and things like that. So do yourself a favor, use Google Earth. You can do the same thing on the West Coast. You can route your trip from San Diego to Hawaii and then over to the Marshall Islands, things like that. It's a bit more spread out over here. So this, in my opinion, this side of the ocean is for somebody that's a little more experienced. For a novice sailor or new sailors down here is the best place to start. You're gonna get all of that information and knowledge that you need right there. So do yourself a favor, pull up Google Earth. It's free. Pull up Google Earth, pull up Wendy. Start mock routing your trips, just like I did in that guide that I showed you, and start to lay them out. You can spend a lot of time doing this, and the better you are at this, the safer you are, the better a captain you are, and the happier everybody on your sailboat's going to be. Don't just willy-nilly this stuff. I'm going to the south side of Puerto Rico. Where? Where are you going to stop? Here, where there's nothing? People are going to get nuts doing that stuff. So use these tools. They are free. Hopefully this video helped give you an introduction into the world of sailboat routing. I think I should explain to you exactly what it is that I do. Now, I am a delivery captain. That is what I do full time. And it is how I make a living. So what that means is that on any given month throughout the year, I will sail somewhere in the neighborhood around 2,000 to 4,000 nautical miles, depending on my deliveries for that particular month. Now, this gives me a unique opportunity to do a lot of things. Number one, I get a ton of actual sailing miles under my belt every single month. 
and my nautical miles traveled just keeps growing because again, it's what I do for a living. This also allows me to get on a wide variety of sailboats, more than just about anyone else, because again, everyone is buying a different vessel. They need to sail them in different conditions from different parts of the world back to their home port. So this gives me again, another unique perspective of actually being able to spend a couple of weeks on a wide variety of sailboats throughout the year, giving me a pretty good idea of a huge variety of boats, how they're gonna handle, how they are laid out, how user-friendly they will be for new sails versus experienced sailors, and so on. So it gives me a really, really good inside look at a lot of these vessels, which is how I can make so many videos talking about hundreds of different vessels. I've actually sailed them thousands of miles on these deliveries, and I can share that information with you 100% free here on YouTube. Now, in addition to being a full-time delivery captain, I am also a sailboat purchasing consultant. So what in the world does that mean? Well, when it comes to buying yourself a new to you, fancy dancy used sailboat, there are a million pitfalls, hurdles involved in the buying process. My goal as a sailboat buying consultant is to help you avoid them all and walk you through every step of buying a used sailboat from start to finish. Whether you are a complete novice on a sailboat and have never stepped foot on a sailboat, or you're an experienced sailor out there, but you're buying a boat and you're not 100% sure what to get. So as a sailboat buying consultant, I walk you through every single step of the process, all the way from the very beginning of knowing absolutely nothing about sailboats. So we will determine together over time what sailboat is gonna work the best for you and your needs, not my needs, and not the sailboats that I like, but getting you the right vessel that is going to work for you. Then from there, we will go on to figure out the correct offer price based on the current market conditions for that vessel. We're gonna go ahead, determine offers. We're gonna set up surveys. We're gonna get the survey back. We're gonna readjust our offer. We're gonna get your insurance handled, set up your delivery, get your first year of sailing planned out for you. So it's really nice, comfortable and easy and make things a seamless transition from living on land to living on a sailboat. Now, a lot of people have no idea what is actually involved in a sailboat and it is nothing like buying a used car. You don't get to run around and test out different sailboats and go and sail them in the ocean. You can't do that on sailboats for the most part. There are some exceptions to that, but for the most part, you don't get to test drive these things. So we've got to get the correct surveyor, make sure we go in depth on the survey, get our offer adjusted based on what comes back on the survey. We then have to go, we have to get you insurance, get you set up with marinas, plan your routes out for your first year. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff involved in buying a used sailboat. Now, this is why I generally like to work with people as long as possible. So if I work with you for a year or more before we actually buy a sailboat for you, that's fantastic. We can really make sure that we have things dialed in properly so that you don't wind up buying the wrong boat and then just traveling around the world, fixing your boat in tropical locations only to sell it just a couple of years later. That is no fun for anyone involved. And I hate seeing people give up on sailing because they purchased the wrong sailboat. Now, we can see this play out all over YouTube all of the time. People buy the wrong boat, then they become a little bit successful, get themselves a totally different boat. But the whole time they were on that wrong boat, they were telling you how great that wrong boat was until they actually had some money and then they just went and bought a catamaran because that happens a lot. And I'm super happy for those guys, pumped for them. But my goal is avoiding that whole first five year scenario of you buying the wrong sailboat. So being a sailboat buying consulting also gives me another unique insight into the world of purchasing a used sailboat. Now, over the last few years, I have helped somewhere around a hundred different people buy their sailboat, whether it was their first sailboat or their 10th sailboat. So again, this has given me a very unique inside perspective into the actual used sailboat market 
Over the last several years, and I've been involved in the purchase of so many sailboats from start to finish as a sailboat buying consultant that I've got a really, really unique perspective on it. And because I also have a YouTube presence, this gives me a huge audience. So I have a much larger audience than your typical broker, and I'll be involved in more boat deals throughout the year than most brokers out there because I have a huge audience on YouTube and I'm helping hundreds of people buy sailboats, just around a hundred or something in the last few years. So not hundreds, but you know what I mean. And that's an absolute ton of sailboat purchases to be involved in. So my videos are based off of what I'm actually doing for a living. This is what I'm seeing day to day, week to week, and month to month firsthand in the world of sailing. So this isn't some half cocked, I need YouTube views marketing gimmick. I get no benefit from you saving money and buying yourself a boat for less money. That in no way benefits me at all financially. I don't make money off of you buying a sailboat for more money or less money. My goal is always just to save you as much money as possible. My goal is not to get you to spend more money. So if you watch my videos and pay attention and take some of my advice and you can save some money, that's fantastic. That costs me nothing to do other than time making these YouTube videos to help you but I get no financial benefit in a random YouTuber watching, saving his money and getting the right boat for less money. This isn't some little gimmick. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm simply sharing with you what I'm seeing every single day of my life based off of what I do for a living. Now, I don't do YouTube for a living. I make these videos simply to help other people get on the water. I don't do it for a living. People often go, oh, look, you have less subscribers. Of course I have less subscribers. My audience is a very specific audience and it's people looking to buy a used sailboat. I'm not a sailing vlogger. I don't travel around on a boat, pointing the camera at myself and showing you white sand beaches and uh, making things dramatic that are not dramatic. I'm a delivery captain and a sailboat buying consultant that happens to make YouTube videos. If you wanna watch my videos and take some tips and you can save yourself money, then that helps me just feel better as a human being, knowing that I'm helping other people in one way or another get out there on the water. Now, with being a delivery captain, this also gives me a huge opportunity to invite other people to come sailing with me all over the world on these deliveries. On any given month, I've got one or two deliveries somewhere in the world sailing 2,000 miles or more, generally speaking. Most of my trips are a week or two long. The average is about two weeks and about 2,500 nautical miles. That's kind of my average every month for uh, doing my deliveries. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's a little bit less. But because I have that opportunity, I'm also able to offer my members the ability to come and sail with me, and it costs them nothing except their travel and their food. That's it. So how do you come sailing with me? Now, a lot of people ask me that question as well, and it's really, really simple. All you have to do is go over to my website, chasinglatitudes.com, sign up for consulting. Now, the consulting members, they always get first crack at these deliveries, and the deliveries generally fill up fast, but because everybody has their own lives and stuff, there's almost always room on all of my deliveries to get someone on the boat and come sail with me. Now, if you compare that cost to something else in the world of sailing, the only way for the average individual to get on a sailboat is usually to run out and charter a sailboat somewhere in a tropical location. That's going to generally run you about $5,000. If you're not experienced, the charter company is going to make you hire a captain for that week that you're on the boat. And now you're going to beat about $7,000 for a week of sailing on a sailboat and trying to learn how to sail. You can do that right through me for a thousand bucks. Super, super simple because I'm not in it for the money. I'm just trying to get you guys on the water. So if you're ever interested in coming sailing with me, that's how you do it. You sign up for consulting. I get you over on the members area. We start chatting and you come sailing with me on a delivery. I have numerous people on my members area that have no desire to ever buy a sailboat. They just want to come sailing with me a couple times a year three or four times a year, whatever works in their schedule. And once you're a consulting member, you have the opportunity to do that. So again, 
my entire goal with my whole YouTube channel, it's just to get people on the water. Now, because I'm a delivery captain and because I can take so many people sailing, I have a huge insight into the world of the used sailboat market. Also being a sailboat buying consultant, I am part of hundreds of deals on any given year. It's generally right around 100 boat deals a year that I'm a part of. So I'm dealing with numerous different vessels in numerous different locations, hundreds of different brokers um, and things like that. So I have a, a giant, giant insight into the world of sailing, how to get on the water, how to learn how to sail, how to buy a boat and how to do all of those things in the most cost effective way possible. If you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, you can head on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com. Now I do offer full consulting over here. Now there's a few different routes that you can go. Let's say that you're interested in a particular boat and you really want me to go in depth with you and take a look at it. You can get a one-on-one, -on -one, one-time consult. It's on sale right now. It's only $100. That gives you lifetime access to my private members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. We will have a live one-on-one -on -one conversation. We'll discuss the boat you might be interested in. Uh, in depth or we can go over several boats. Whatever it is you need, you can grab the one-time consult. Now, if you're in the process of buying and you kind of still got to narrow some things down, maybe you've had a previous survey that didn't work out, you're trying to determine like offer prices, things like that, you can grab a consulting package. And this will be three different consults. So we can go over multiple boats, we can touch back and forth, lifetime access to the members area, all of those good things. This is currently on sale. It's only $375. And then if you're starting your whole journey, you don't know where to start, you need help the entire process, you can get the 24 seven complete package. Again, lifetime access to the members area. It's currently half off. It's only a thousand dollars. And I'll walk you through every step of the way until we get you the boat that's gonna work for you. Now this never expires. If you're not ready to buy a boat for a year or two, I say grab this now while it's on sale. That way we can do a whole bunch of foundational work over the next year or two before you're actually ready to buy. We can get you out on boats. We can look at some things. We can really, really get in depth and narrow down your search. We'll come up with offer prices. We'll go over the survey together, reduction in our prices, sea trials, all kinds of stuff. That's where you want the 24 seven consulting package. If you're really, really serious about getting on the water. Also something that helps is my spreadsheet. Now, you get my number one best-selling sailing book as well as my spreadsheet for only $10. So I published a sailing book on how to buy a used sailboat a couple years ago. It was the number one best-selling sailing book out there at the time. So you also get that. It's only $10. So over my web suit site, fantastic place to go. Um, I've got a little bit of apparel up here, stuff like that. But again, what we're really doing here is we just want to get you a boat that's going to work for you. So head on our website, grab a consulting package. Let's get you over in the members area. Let's get started.